Materials supplied by Microsoft Corporation may be used for internal review, analysis, or research only. Any editing, reproduction, publication, rebroadcast, public showing, internet or public display is forbidden and may violate copyright law. Okay, so the scenario we're going to use today is I, AJ, am a researcher who deploys stuff into people's homes, which happens to be true, and I'm going to Chris's home. Anybody here named Chris? Okay, we'll pretend Chris is right there. Um, and so what we're going to do is this is Chris's home wireless router right here. Chris is good and has a nice fancy password, which I'm sure he'll change right after I come there. And so what I have here is a Windows laptop that is running Home OS, and it's going to serve as my home hub. It's going to be the local computer in the house that's going to talk to the sensors and also stream the data and talk to the cloud. So the first thing I need to do is join, get this computer onto the home network. So this is going to do two things. It's going to put my computer on the home network. It's also going to tell the home hub the name of the home network and its password so that it can give that to other sensors that it's configuring. This is all one-time setup, right? I've shown up at Chris's house. I need to get set up, and we're trying to make it as smooth as possible. So I'm going to give Chris a home ID. He's not going to be, I'm not going to be as good about the password. And a default email. So that'll set the home ID. At this point, the hub is basically configured. Uh, it's got a home ID. It has remote access, which we'll come back to later. And actually, if I go over to our management portal here, these are different hubs that I've deployed. So I can quickly see that the hub is already sending a heartbeat up to uh, Azure. So I, as the researcher, can always monitor and know, you know, is it still working? Do I need to call that participant? Do I need to go visit? I can know that remotely, which having had some stuff where we didn't have this and then we found out later it wasn't working, really handy. So that, again, that was one-time setup. If I decide as the researcher that Chris is going to interact with my UI, it's not just a logging study, this is the dashboard that Chris would see. It's, run, uh, it's built using HTML5 so that you can log in on other web browsers, other devices, all of those things. So the study that I am putting in Chris's house is we're actually going to look at how many times Chris uses his front door. So I've got the Z-Wave door window sensor, and I'm going to go ahead and add it. And so for Z-Wave, as some of you know, there's a Z-Wave dongle here that's actually connected to my hub, and I need to put it in the pairing state. So I'll go ahead and push pair here, click the button on that, and I'll get into this final device setup menu. So we're going to call this the front door sensor. Say that it's a door window sensor. I'm actually going to say that it's at the front door, because maybe I'm like Kameen and I'm going to have you know 50 of these on every door. At this point also, the Home Hub knows that there are certain applications that can use this kind of sensor. In fact, this alerts app, which I wrote as the uh, researcher. And it offers me the opportunity to install that here if I want. So when we come back to the dashboard, the Alerts app is there. This is just an example application with the helpful fake sensor. But if I go ahead and simulate a door opening and closing, you'll see that it shows up here. In this case, I've written the app so it's going to email Chris. I might want it to email a researcher. And what it's also doing is recording that data up to the cloud. So again, I remotely can make sure and I can look and I can analyze the data that's coming in. And Ratul will talk more about the cloud in the design overview. So let's go look at Chris's email. And we can see, is it about 3.34? Yay, Chris got the alert. So we already have that wired up as well. Oops. OK, so now I think, you know, alerts are nice, but maybe Chris actually wants to see who's at the front door when the sensor fires. So I'm going to go ahead and add uh, this FOSCAM that's right here. So what's happening right here in this Add Devices menu is that the Home Hub actually has a bunch of scouts, and it's looking for devices that are already in the environment just to make it easy for you to set up. So we'll talk about custom devices in just a second. But in this case, it's found the integrated camera that's on my laptop, which is super handy for trying the platform out, and this exciting, very well-named MAC address thing. So this is a FOSCAM. It asks me if I'm going to be setting up a wireless camera. If I choose yes here, the platform will actually take those credentials and shove it over to the camera and help you configure it. For the interest of time, I'm just going to say no, but you can come to the demo tomorrow and see that in action. So we'll call this front door cam. Um, I'm going to also put it at the front door. 
And here you can see a new application has become available because I've now um, installed a camera. So let me go ahead and install the camera viewer. And it lets me choose, you know, if this wasn't a camera that I wanted to be triggered by the alerts application, I wouldn't click this, but I do. So I'll go ahead and do that. Not surprisingly, new app down here. So this uh, is the first time startup of the camera viewer. You won't see that again. And everyone over here should smile and wave. Yes, hello. Um, and so this is also just another simple example application we've written that shows how to get cameras, how to move them around, how to do simple recordings. Oh, people still waving. So those were, um, as Kameen mentioned, those are uh, cus uh, sorry, commercial devices. And that's really handy. Um, and the platform already supports connecting to the Z-Wave sensors and other types of sensors. But sometimes when you have research, you have to build your own sensors. So we've actually been building a bunch of sensors using .NET Gadgeteer. Um, and primarily because we want to get to really, really simple setup. And I encourage you to come tomorrow and see those. But what I thought would be more fun is for Aaron, who's Kameen's student, to, to show you the door jam sensor. So that occupancy sensor that, she, uh, that Kameen talked about, Aaron's been s spending just a tiny bit of her internship uh, connecting it to the lab of things. So what Aaron did first was write a little scout so that when I clicked add devices, you may have already seen it. The door jam three sensor shows up and I can go ahead and click on that. Maybe click on that, there we go. And this very familiar final device setup will come up. We'll call this the door jam sensor. And Aaron also wrote a small application, which will look very familiar. Again, this is the one-time setup of the device talking to the platform. So it just waits. And then it will come up, which always seems longer when you're demoing. And so now, uh, looking shockingly like the Alerts app, if Erin walks under the door, she might see something. She saw something this morning. Can you try it one more time? And then you know why live demos are so much fun. Um, OK, that means that the driver crashed. And if we reinstalled it, it will probably work. But you can come tomorrow. It was all just a thing to get you to come to our demo session tomorrow to see it actually working. Um, OK. So that was uh, off-the-shelf devices uh, and some custom, mostly custom devices. And then the last thing I wanted to show you was remote access. So if you ever have people with studies, you put it in their house, they might want to see it on their phone when they're not there. So I'm going to do that. We use Microsoft Live uh, ID and authentication, so you can permit people like yourself to have access to a hub running in there. And so I thought I would just show you Brush Home, uh, which is my hub running at my house, and I'll go ahead and look at the camera that is on my front um, door. I wonder if I lost internet connectivity. That would be fascinating. Ah, there we go. Okay. So this is my front door camera, which will load shortly. Um, and we could move it around, and there's no one at my, on my driveway right now. And then, of course, as soon as you put a camera up, your children want to go run out in front of it and dance for it and have you do recordings of it. OK, so that was just a taste of the platform. Um, and what Ritul is going to come up and do a design overview. And that will make clear sort of what's already built in the platform, what you as the researcher plug in for your particular studies.